Good morning. I wanted to make a quick video. This is this video is about the preaching and the teaching of the Holy Spirit and how essential the Holy Spirit is to us as a friend and a helper, even a counselor, a builder, a restorer, and our response back to the Holy Spirit. This video is gonna be powerful and it comes from experience. It doesn't come from my head knowledge, it comes from struggles and experience and him being there working out my salvation with me working out my troubles with me uh, solving problems as they come with me and I want to teach on the, how essential the Holy Spirit is to a Christian so first and foremost if you do not have the Holy Spirit it's important that we give him that invitation and that welcoming so that he can come into our lives because no one comes into your house unless you welcome them uh, unless they're a robber um, but when they knock we, we answer that door so it's something as simple as asking him from your heart when you ask him from your heart God responds to realness you know that's what I love about God you, you, the Bible says you cannot mock God you cannot um you know pretend to be one way and then you're really another way you're not you're not fooling anybody God created you and he knows what's what and who's who so when you ask God or pray to God, come at Him with raw, you know, just as real as can be. And God really welcomes that and He understands us better than we could ever imagine and He wants to help us. So if we come knowing that He's not there waiting for us with a, a big bat to bash us, we would be more inclined to pray, okay? This particular video is about the Holy Spirit and the experience that the Holy Spirit allowed me to have with him he allowed me to see um, and experience him in a new way and um, I've been walking with the Lord for eight years now and when I when I first started me and the Holy Spirit were like this uh, I prayed to him for everything 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 uh, you know it was just like conversations that I would have with him just going throughout my day if I'm at work I'm praying to the Holy Spirit about what he thinks about this or that and it's just really a companion treating him as my friend and just get, actually getting responses from him which really delighted me and, and still does to this day which is beautiful because that's that that's that friend that we could all use Apart from um, Holy Spirit being a friend, he's also a counselor, and um, he counsels you when you're going the wrong way, when you're when you're when you're making bad decisions. You'll hear his voice, and uh, a lot of people don't heed to the voice because the voice is always sweet and it's always small, so to speak. It not always, but for the most part, he's not yelling at you, he's not screaming at you, he's not. He's just instructing you. Hey, you shouldn't do that. And, you know, it seems like we we need somebody a lot more like, you're not going to do that, you know, like, in order for us to, uh, to but I'm, I love the Holy Spirit. And, um, and, and his ways are always right. Basically, whenever he says not to do one thing or another, obviously it's for our own good. And when we choose not to listen, we definitely understand later on after we went through our heartache, uh, the pain and suffering that it brought upon us, you know, we come back and we're like, all right, he was telling me the truth. And, and that's how you build trust. So when you mess up, this is a bullet point for this, uh, for this teaching right here. When you mess up. It actually acts like a staircase for you to get closer to God. For those that are really genuinely saved, uh, God doesn't leave you. Uh, he doesn't forsake you. Uh, he, he sticks with you and He tries to help you uh, over and over and over again as much as you mess up, as many times as you mess up. Um, you know, for, 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 for a true, genuine Christian that, that, you know, really truly loves the Lord and really wants to... Uh, to make himself or herself better for God but but has a particular sin or addiction or whatever in their life um, I just want to speak life into you I want to let you know from experience that Holy Spirit 
that lives inside of you, um, he will take it out of you. Um, I think that we do play a role in it in terms of, like I heard, the, I heard God, uh, Holy Spirit say uh, to me not too long ago, he said, resist the devil, you know, uh, resist the devil. I think that we play a role in this whole thing. It's not just give it to God and just like, I think that we have to show God that we're serious. We don't genuinely want to do these things. If you're, if you're a slave, if you're bound to it, they know. God knows. And uh, he will definitely help you. Um, but at the same time, I just feel like, um, you know, throwing a fast or, you know, praying diligently to, for it to break off of your life. I think that, that these things are essential for your freedom to happen. Um, God is a gentleman and he will come in and he will do marvelous things in your life with invitation, with invitation. <clears throat> and after you give him the invitation to do many things in your life, wait, because that's, that's the part that's next is for you to wait for it to happen because things take time. So I want to talk about how Holy Spirit comes and builds and restores in our life after after uh we go through seasons that we're not we're not proud of sin season so we fell and, uh, and we feel ashamed and guilty and the devil's trying to use it to condemn us and we're finding ourselves in this pit and we can't get out of it and it's dark and it's scary and pits like pornography pits like uh you know any anything to do with addiction i believe any i don't want to just put one sin in there and and then leave the rest out i want to just give you hope because it's our job to encourage one another's and it's also um our job to tell the truth is this is not a, a preaching to to tickle your ears this is my experience with what the holy spirit did in my life and how he got me out of pornography um let me tell you a little bit about that. I was getting on this phone that I'm doing a video right now on, and I would just use this phone to look up uh, images that, you know, my eyes would feast on. Things that I wasn't supposed to be looking at, and, and it was a repetitive daily thing that I could not get out of. And I wanted to. Uh, I knew it was wrong. I felt dirty. I felt guilty. I felt shame. I felt like I couldn't come to God after after I fell. And I would just hear the Holy Spirit every time I fall. I would hear the Holy Spirit minister to me. And I would hear the Holy Spirit say things like, you know, don't worry. You know, I'm going to get through this. Uh, we all fall short, you know. Um, and I'll tell you how the Holy Spirit helped me to get out of it. Um, you know, in the book of uh, where where Moses, uh, Exodus. You know, the people were complaining for uh, the people were complaining for for meat. They wanted uh, something to eat uh, for meat because they they were just eating manna, which is bread. Um, <coughs> sorry about that. And they were eating it repetitively, week after week, month after month, and then they just said to themselves, "Man, we we want something else to eat." So long story short, they started to complain about meat. And they wanted meat, and they wanted meat, and they wanted meat. And they were driving Moses crazy. So Moses prayed to God, and then God responded saying, Fine, you want meat? And uh, I think God, I think in the Bible it says that God was humbling them uh, through, through eating of the bread, you know, because he had so much to do with them. He, he molds and shapes our character. He molds and shapes the way we talk, the way we think, and everything, one, one, and he uses um, hardship as a way to do that. He, the chisel is is whatever you're going through uh, in, in hardship. It could be addiction. It could be it could be a uh, you know sin addiction. It could be you know your your parents, or it could be your children. It could be you know that that's what God uses to break us down and then build us back up in His image through ministering to us through devotions you know god you know so it's almost like emptying yourself out and then god fills you up with him himself but first we need to be emptied out of ourselves which is selfish and pride and ego 
and just all all kinds of like self 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 it's always about self and god's kingdom it's about the opposite it's all about giving and loving and helping others and leaving yourself for last so god has to deliver us from ourselves and so i found myself being my own worst enemy in that i kept doing the one thing that i felt was separating me from god and as i said earlier you know i felt like i was giving the devil a foothold i felt i felt like i felt shamed i felt like i knew better i felt like <coughs> i felt like i was a castaway in some ways because i'm just like man why are you doing this you're, you're, you're making me feel like i'm gonna get judged on judgment day you know for these things and they're not even worth it you know it's not even something that is is worth worth hell or worth uh, uh like it, it's not worth it and so imagine struggling with your own self one part of you says i want to live pure clean holy I want to be the salt of the earth. I want to be everything that God wants me to be. I just want God. And then and in, in, within the same body, you know, you're struggling with wanting to, you know, watch pornography, which is one of those things that God hates, right? And so it's like, there's a battle there. There's a war there. You almost, you know, it's the flesh. It's the, You hate the flesh. The, the flesh hates the spirit, and the spirit hates the flesh. So... That's what I was dealing with, and I just found myself in bed, you know, mopey and sorry that that I kept falling, and I was just so depressed and so down, and and um, and I would always hear, just hear the Holy Spirit counseling me, and the Holy Spirit, you know, letting me know that that He was there for me and that He was going to help me through this, and and not to give up, and uh, and to keep going, and that He He was going to work it out for me, and it, like. He kept telling me that this is not going to satisfy you. That's one of the things that he kept saying. Every time like, I would be in, in the, the act of starting to watch it, which is the most exciting part because you haven't yet gotten into the, you know, it's just you're starting. And then it's like, he would just minister to me and tell me, this is not going to satisfy you. But he would let me do it. He would let me go on, like, he would watch me do it, and then afterwards, he would console me and say, it's okay, son, it's okay, it's okay, you're not condemned, I accept you, I receive you, and I know that this might sound to some, some people, like, it goes against scripture, and you'll get judged and condemned, and, and God, you know, wrath abides on a person like that, and this and that, but I'm telling you my ex personal experience, of how Holy Spirit delivered me from pornography. It was an addiction of mine. And, and unfortunately, the devil was using it for everything it was worth to try to uh, destroy my calling, destroy my destiny with God, destroy my reputation, everything that I had going for me. I, I do believe that, you know, every time we commit those actions, uh, that we lose anointing, that we lose power, so to speak, because I did feel like I had amassed certain type of treasure or a certain type of uh you know just the gifts of god or the talents of god or whatever it may be because when you chase after god and when you look after when you connect yourself to the vine fruit starts to bear on your branches and you can feel those things tangibly on you to where you can minister to somebody and you're just on point and this and that the prophetic and you can feel the anointing and all that and i do feel like when we fall into sin, such as like pornography, as I'm talking about, like there is like a measure that gets poured out of that godliness that, that was poured out. And it's like, you're like, man, I had that before. And now I don't feel like I have it anymore. I felt that. Um, and it, these are the battles and the struggles. It's like you, you make it makes you think like, man, this ain't worth it, you know? You know, when I'm with God, I'm happiest. When I'm clean, I'm happiest. But when I fall, I feel dirty and guilty and shameful. And, and on top of feeling all those ways, then I'm going to get judged for it too. I'm like, man, this ain't worth it. Holy Spirit was always faithful. Holy Spirit was always there with me, telling me, 
you know, how it's not over, how he's going to work this out for my good. He would tell me we all fought short. He would tell me all these different things to, to pick me up. Mind you, he would tell me right after the fall, right after the fall. Um, as soon as the condemnation thoughts started to come in, like, oh, he wants nothing to do with me. He would tell me, you're amazing. You're amazing. And to tell you the truth, like, I felt, I felt like a douche. I didn't feel amazing. But those are the types of words that he would minister to me. And I just made me, it broke me in a lot of ways to, to, to say, man, how you love me in spite. And, um, and so, like, I would continue to fall. I would continue to fall. Um, knowing that the Holy Spirit had my back and gave me the grace telling me I'm not condemned and that he, he's going to work it out for me. He's going to bless me. He's going to help me and all this stuff. I just, I just, I didn't feel the need to quit because I felt like, I felt like, um, like God was on my side, so to speak. And he understood, so to speak. And you kind of rationalize this. But at the same time, I was battling because I didn't want to do it. I really genuinely didn't want to do it anymore. I had this godly sorrow in me. I was just like, you know what, I'm done. I really don't want to do this. I, I would do all kinds of different things, deleting apps and this and that on my phone. And, you know, I would always find a way to fall again. But uh, it, it it went on for, for a long time. And so, you know... One thing that was consistent was that the Holy Spirit kept telling me, I'm going to get you through this. I'm going to get you through this. I'm going to get you out of this. And he would he would tell me different things that were super sweet, like the opposite of what you, you expect to hear after you fail or fall. And so I'm just here to encourage you that God, if you're falling and you feel sorry and you don't want to do it anymore, um... I'll pray for you right now, but I'm just saying, like, I understand that sin is, is, is not part of God's kingdom, and I'm not trying to uh, give anybody the green light to just keep on sinning. That's not what I'm doing here. What I am doing is, is that there is no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. So, like, if you're genuine about God, you know what I'm saying, and you're falling, you know, I believe that God's working it out for you. As he did for me, um, through mercy and through grace, not because we're special, but because he's special. But then we have a response. Uh, I do believe in um, this being a two-way street. I I can't um, emphasize that enough that I have a response to to respond back to God. Like, okay, now that you did this for me, this is what I'm gonna do for you. And so, like, I'm here with my Bible, I'm here with my worship, I'm here making a video for, for people to watch it so that they can um, also get what I got, freely you received, you know, freely give. I believe in all that. Uh, but another thing that I believe in is, is that everything that God shows you that He does for you, uh, like all this uh, love that Holy Spirit was pouring out on me while I was in sin, while I was falling, uh, right after I fell, we're supposed to take that and say, you're teaching me something at the same time. You're teaching me how to be graceful and uh, loving and merciful in the hard times, in the pressure times. When people sin against me, this is how I'm supposed to respond with them. And so he's fathering us and he's also, he's doing something multidimensional. You know, he's fixing us, restoring us, delivering us. He's building us from within. He's taking things out. He's also teaching us how to be with others. Because the Bible says that, you know, God God forgave somebody a billion dollar debt. And then that person, you know, found somebody that, that sinned against them. And then he's like, no, you're going to pay me. And then God's like, how evil can you be? Didn't I just forgive you? Shouldn't you forgive him? Because I'm showing you what to do. I'm showing you by how I treat you what I want you to do for others. And so we do have a response. We have a role to play in what we take from God. You know, it's not just for us. But God's always mu uh, working multidimensional. And He wants you to take what He's doing in your life. Apply it to your kids, your wife, 
and to others. And when you fall short, just show yourself that you're man enough or woman enough to go and fix it. You know, don't leave it uh, damaged. Uh, if you did, if you did uh, uh, overreact because somebody uh, uh, did something to you, you know, there is. Like going back and saying, you know what, I overreacted, I apologize, I'm working on my temper, I'm asking God to help me with my anger, I, I shouldn't have done that to you, you don't deserve that, you know, can I have a hug, will you forgive me? And uh, that goes a long way too, so even if you do slip up, you can get a paper towel and pick up the, the spill that you spilled. So, uh, God loves you, the message here is that God loves you and He's helping us. To live more like Him, to look more like Him, to, to, to intercede for one another, to restore one another, to encourage one another, to be connected to Him so that we can look more like Him and bless more people through Him, through His access of what we know about Him and what He's poured into us. Then we have the obligation to say, okay, <laughs> I apologize, I'm coming over a cold right now, but Holy Spirit is, He's sincere and He's genuine. And he's holy and he's pure. And he wants us to be those ways too. And so you become that by spending more and more time with him. So, you know, just understand that when when it comes down to godliness, you know, the same way you pick up habits that are not good, pick up the habit of, of straight up just spending time with God on a daily basis through worship and reading the Bible and talking to him and just spending time with him. I promise you it becomes a, a habit. And you don't even think about it. You just wake up and you just go straight to God. And um, it's not a, a ritual. It's not anything. It's just he's he's part of your life. Period. Like he he has a he's there, and you know it. And, and whoever's there, you don't ignore. You, you, you're you going to go and talk to them and offer them um, sacrifices or offerings such as coffee. If it's a guest, you offer them coffee or snacks. But if it's God, you offer him sacrifices and offerings. And um, I, 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 I advise you to, to fast. I got a whole lot out of fasting. I started fasting every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for God. And let me tell you quickly that there is a difference between dieting and fasting. Dieting is going without food. Fasting is seeking God and giving your time to God, um, connecting yourself to Him, and, and then going without food. Um, I know people throw in, all oh, go th without internet, go without this, go without that. You could fast like that. But uh, something about going uh, without food, it just accelerates um, your request, um, whatever you're asking for from God, he, you're not forcing him to do it, but God responds to sincerity. God responds to anything that is genuine, that comes straight from the heart, that is real. God responds to that. And that's why I started this, uh, this video by saying, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, when you ask God for the Holy Spirit, just make sure that anything you have to say to God, it comes from the heart and is genuine. And I promise you, God will not... God is, God is a person that he is, he's genuine himself and he wants a relationship. So he's willing to go the extra mile to, to meet you where you're at. And he, all he wants is a little, he wants you to be genuine, you know. If you're not hungry for him, say, God, you know, I just, I don't feel like seeking you, but I know it's important. Can you give me the hunger to seek you? Boom. That's, that's real. That's being real right there. Let me pray for you guys. Uh, Father, I don't know who I'm praying for. Uh, you know them. If there's a person here by the name of Jackie that's um, watching this uh, video, I just felt like I saw that name in the, in the spirit. And uh, Jackie, he's helping you. Jackie hasn't let you go. And Jackie, uh, be uh, encouraged. Because if he calls you out by your name... <laughs> And you know that he's, he's working in your life. And so, quite frankly, 
Holy Spirit was ministering to me the whole time saying, you know, I'm going to make this happen for you. We're going to get through this. And so if you're hearing Holy Spirit talk to you in that way, then trust the process and you'll, you'll see that he gets you out of it. Okay. Uh, we get impatient, but God is on time. Okay. So let's just believe God. Father, we just open the heavens, Father, through our prayer. And, um, and believing in you and knowing that you are faithful and genuine, God. And we just, as your children, God, we pray to the Most High God. And we just ask you, Lord, to help us to be delivered from uh, snakes and thorns and, and thistles and all kinds of sin and uh, decay. All other things that come steal, kill, and destroy, Father. We just ask you, Jesus, darkness. May it flee under your presence, God. May light invade our lives. May the love of Christ uh, fill our, our vessels. May we look more like you each and every day. You know, Father, we ask you to forgive our sins, God. We, we ask you to forgive our sins. Um, we don't want to sin. We want you. We just thank you, God, that we get to have you and you get to have us. Uh, just thank you, Lord. Thank you for the people listening. And thank you for receiving the prayer. Teach them how to receive and teach them how to engage. Teach them how to connect themselves to you. Teach them how to receive. Because there is something that we have to do. There's something that we have to do to receive and to connect ourselves. And teach them, Lord. Give them eyes to see and ears to hear, Father. And allow them. Allow them to have access to you, to where they can be delivered and live free as you intended and become an enemy of the devil. I bless them, God, in your name, Jesus. Amen.